the bell icon to turn on notifications. In order for a project to work and flow correctly, project tasks need to be performed in the right sequence. And when it comes to a project plan, task dependencies or links basically define the sequence of the tasks. And it's worth noting that most links have a link type of finish to start. So what exactly does that mean, this finish to start? Well, let's take a look at our current schedule. So if we scroll to, let's say, these tasks just here, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit because that is a little bit too wide. Now, if we take a look at these tasks, so task 11 down to about task 15, notice that we have little arrows linking these tasks together. So effectively, what these links denote is that task number 12 isn't going to start until task number 11 has finished. So that is what we call a finish to start link. And you'll find that the majority of links that you come across in project are going to be finished to start. One task finishes before the next task can begin. So effectively, what we have here is task number 11 is a predecessor of task number 12. So how do we create links between two tasks? Well, let's scroll down a bit further in the schedule. And I'm going to say here that task number 32 assign teams to regions can't be completed until we've assigned trainers to teams because each trainer has a specific preference as to which region they'd like to travel to. So we need to establish that first before we assign the teams to the regions. Now I have task number 32 highlighted and if you take a look at the timeline view or where we normally have our bars, I've got nothing on the screen. I'm not in the correct position in the schedule. Now a quick way to jump to the part of the bars that relates to the task that you're currently clicked on is to simply go up to the task tab and all the way over in the editing group, we have a scroll to task button. Now, if I click this, it's going to move me to the place in the schedule relevant to where I'm clicked in the task entry table. Now, you'll find yourself using this scroll to task button all the time. So while I'm here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add it to my quick access toolbar to make it super easy for me to access. So I can see here that task number 32 is a manually scheduled task and I need to link it to task number 31. So for this, we need to select the task we want to link to first and then the other task. So I'm going to hold down control and select both of these. Then up on the task ribbon in the schedule group, I'm going to click this little link chain icon. And notice here that there is a keyboard shortcut to quickly link tasks of control F2. Now, when I click this, notice what happens to the bars. It inserts a link. So now we have this little arrow that links these two tasks. But if we also check out what we have in the predecessors column in the entry table, you can see that it's automatically added that task number 31 is a predecessor of task number 32. Now, when we're working through our schedule and we're creating lots of different links and dependencies, it can sometimes be quite useful to see a little bit more information about those links. So what we can do is go up to the view ribbon and in split view, I'm going to select details. And this opens up another window at the bottom called the task form. And what this is going to show me is additional information about whatever task I'm currently clicked on in the task entry view. So if we take this linked task, for example, if I click on task number 32, I can see some further information. I can see the name of the task, the duration, the fact that it's manually scheduled, the percentage complete. And if I take a look over on the right hand side, I can see the task that it's linked to. So it's linked to task ID 31, assign trainers to teams. And it's telling me that the task type is FS, which basically means finish to start. Now, it's also worth noting when you're working with links that you don't necessarily just have to link each task to the previous task individually. You can do them all in one go. For example, I could select um, these three tasks just here, go up to the task ribbon and click on create link. And it's automatically going to create finish to start links for all of these tasks. So that can be really helpful if you have tasks in your project that can only start when the previous task finishes. Now, aside from clicking on the little chain link icon in the schedule group to link tasks together, you can also link in a couple of other ways. 
For example, if I wanted to link tasks two and three together, I can simply come over to the predecessors column and I can either type the task number, in this case, number two, or alternatively, if I delete that out, I can click the drop down arrow. It's going to pull up a big long list of all of the tasks and I can select the task that I want to link to from here. So again, that would be number two. So three different methods that you can use in order to link your tasks. Now I'm going to remove that because I don't want to link those two. Notice as I did that, as I added that link, check out the cells that are showing as being changed. The dates for all of the tasks below changed because of that link I just created. And that is why these are showing as changed cells. Now we do have other task types that we can add in. As I said, by far, finish to start is the most common. But we also have finish to finish links that we can add, where the finish of one controls the finish of another. And then we have the two rarest task types, start to start and start to finish. And those really aren't used very often. And I will say that something like start to start can be quite problematic. If the predecessor task starts and then is delayed, it could finish after the successor. And start to finish means that the start of one task triggers the finish of the other. As I said, both of those are extremely rare. Now, if you want to change the type of link that a task has, again, we need to make sure that we have our details pane open. And if we select, let's say this task, on the right hand side in the task form where we can see the predecessor, we can also see the type. So this is a finish to start, but we can come in here and change this to a finish to finish. We can change it to a start to finish, or we can change it to a start to start. And this subject is definitely something I recommend reading the help files on so you get a really good idea as to the types of scenarios, the types of tasks where you might have to use a different link type. And if we take a quick look in the help files, you can see here underneath types of tasks, we have those different link types and a full description. And in this description, it gives you different scenarios where these might come up. So I definitely recommend having a read through so that you know if and when you need to apply those to your project plan. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.